Hello, my name is Daniel Manaza, and I'm with the Cisco Tech Architecture team. In this video, I will guide you through the process of upgrading a Cisco IOS XE router using a consolidated image on an ISR 4451. However, this process extends to other IOS XE routers, including ASR 1000s, ISR 4000s, and Catalyst 8000B virtualized routers. Let's get started. We'll start by doing some preparation ahead of the upgrade. First, it's a good idea to save a backup of your current running configuration for the rare occurrence when disaster recovery is needed. To do so, we can save the outputs of the show running config command. However, a show tech support contains the running configuration along with a number of additional outputs, so it is generally more useful to collect. With a backup saved, we can copy the desired consolidated image, the .bin file, to the router. We can access the software on the Cisco Software Downloads page for our desired platform. In this demonstration, we're using an ISR 4451, so we'll navigate to that downloads page. We can select our desired version of software and click on the corresponding download link to download it. Once downloaded, we can copy it to our router. I have moved the image to a local SFTP server, so I will copy the file to the router using SFTP. A USB flash drive is often an easy alternative. After the copy is complete, it is a good idea to verify the integrity of the file to ensure it was not corrupted at some point along the way. There are two ways we can accomplish this. First, we can confirm the file size of the image on the router. We can also validate the MD5 checksum of the image on the router. We can take both of these values, file size and MD5 hash, to the software downloads page to verify that they match the expected values. Once we've validated the integrity of the target image, we can update the boot system variable, which directs the router on the image we should boot up. After entering global configuration mode, we'll need to remove any existing boot variables that are set by running no boot system. Then we can provide the target image using the boot system boot flash image configuration. Optionally, we can then specify any additional boot variables to fall back to in case we're unable to boot the first image specified. In this case, I'll point the router to the current pre-upgrade image as a fallback option. The router will try to boot from the images in a top-down manner. We can then exit global configuration mode using the end command. Let's check that the boot system variables reflect the images and order we expect with the show run pipe include boot system command. We can then save the configuration using copy, running config, startup config. Now we are ready to schedule a maintenance window or downtime for the upgrade process. This process requires a reload, so the device will be down temporarily. With all upgrades, it is best practice to have console access to the router in case disaster recovery is needed. Should the device end up in Raman, we'll need console access to boot up an image. Direct console access or console access through a terminal server both work well. With console access and a maintenance window in progress, we can reload the router with the reload command. We can then monitor the boot process on the console. Once the router comes back online, we can verify the upgrade was successful with the show version command. If you encounter any problems, please open a TAC case for further assistance. Thank you for watching.